Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing kind of a more fundamentals type video. I wanna show you how to sand the rims of your tumblers and how to finish the rims of your tumblers and what they should look like by the time you're done. I get a lot of questions on this. A lot of people asking me to do close-ups of how this looks and exactly how much sanding needs to be done and why. And so in this video, I'd like to go very into depth on that subject and I hope you guys find this helpful. You're gonna see all the products in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You may even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so I'm starting out with a cup that I've already glittered and epoxied. This cup has two layers of epoxy on it, and I have not done any sanding up to this point. So my goal for this video is to show you the uncut, unfiltered sanding process that I use almost every single time. All right, so I've got a 60 grit sanding block here, and we're gonna first sand around the top rim. I always start with the top rim because it's always scratchy. It's always pokey up there, okay? It always needs to be smoothed out. And we also need to expose a fine line of stainless steel up there. The reason we need to expose this fine line of stainless steel is this is where our final coats of epoxy are going to adhere to to create the seal for our tumbler. I like to establish the seal on the outer rim rather than the very top rim because the top rim will be more vulnerable to friction from the lid. It's exposed to more moisture. And this is just going to end with a much more cleaner look for us, okay? Some people like to do this with rotary grinders. I used to do mine with a rotary grinder connected to my air compressor and a flapper wheel attachment. I quit doing that because I just don't have the accuracy and steadiness in my hand to do that. And I found that it took me just as much time as this takes me and I got more accuracy using the sanding blocks. Now I know that's not the same for everybody and I would highly encourage you to use whichever method works best for you. All right, I also like doing this too because it's less mess. Um, but at any rate, no matter what kind of sanding method you use, you should always use um, the correct PPE because epoxy, uh, dust from sanding is very toxic, all right? So you're gonna see here in a minute exactly how much of that stainless steel we're going to expose here. And I like to just keep going around until I have a very uniform line all the way around. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult if you used Mod Podge as an adhesive for your glitter versus epoxy method, which is what I normally use. With this particular cup, I did use Mod Podge as my adhesive for this pink section. So I have to work at it a little harder, but all in all, exposing that top rim only took me a total of three minutes. And you can see exactly how much I took off and that is sufficient enough for our final coat to adhere to for this the final seal there. If I were to be doing a peekaboo tumbler where I'm going to be painting over my glitter, like you guys have seen me do in some other videos, you would want to expose more stainless steel because you're gonna have to paint over this and then once you paint over it and then you epoxy over that, you're gonna wanna sand again because you'll see that that fine line that we exposed earlier has now been covered with the paint and we need to expose it again. The reason you need to sand twice is because if you don't sand down that glitter far enough, when you go to put the paint on later on, you risk sanding too far down through the paint and exposing some of that glitter, which we don't want, okay? And you guys have heard me say this stuff a million times in some of my other videos, uh, but I just want to double cover that, <laughs> all right? Next, I always sand down around this bottom rim. All right, lately I have been taping off my bottom rim, um, which if you want a video explaining why and the benefits to taping off the bottom of your tumblers, let me know in the comments and we can make a, se a separate video about that. 
but whenever I'm sanding around this bottom rim, I want to sand it down to get it as smooth as possible while also not sanding down too much to expose any of the stainless steel, which happens a lot when I was using electric sanders or rotary grinders with my air compressor. So I just quit doing that again, just sanding by hand because I had way more control. I alternate between a finer grit on this bottom rim because I'm taking off less at one time so I don't risk going down too far. And also you wanna kind of be careful because even though you're not gonna see the sand lines once we epoxy over this, sometimes if you sand with too rough of a grit and we leave too much, I don't know, kind of roughed up and stuff, there's always that like chance that you're gonna see that through the epoxy. So on areas like this where I know you're gonna see any kind of mistakes or things, I like to use a finer grit like this 120 block that I'm using here, all right? And this particular tumbler has a very sharp edge to it on the corner, on the bottom here. It's not a rounded corner for the bottom of this tumbler. So I almost want to sand to a point rather than sanding, you know, around the rim. I almost want to sand it to a point. So I want to get the sides really smooth and then the very bottom really smooth so that that corner comes out to a point. And then I will very lightly sand around the corner. This does take extra time, <laughs> but I can promise you it's definitely worth it. I really do not like to sand, send a cup out that has a rough bottom corner. It's really important to me that this is totally smooth, okay? The other thing that's important is that the bottom is totally flat and isn't rocky. We're gonna cover rocky bottoms here later on in the video probably saw earlier in the video where I was sanding the side and any pokey parts that were sticking out along the side of my tumbler. The goal here is that all surfaces of the cup are totally smooth before we add on our decals because we are going to see any of those little bumps and things uh, through our vinyl once we get to that point. But here you can see a close-up of just how smooth this really is. If I find that this bottom corner is super rough and I'd have to do a lot of sanding to get it smooth, I will just forego this step until after my third coat of epoxy, okay? Once I get it all sanded up, I'm gonna just wash it off with some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels. Alternatively, you can wash this off at the sink with some dish soap and water and get it all dried off. And at this point, I'm ready for decals with this particular tumbler. All right, and so you can see here, I've got all my decals on and now I'm ready for what will be my third coat of epoxy. This third coat was actually 30 milliliters because I've got so much vinyl work on here and it's a little bit colder, so I tend to use a little bit more epoxy in my shop during those times. All right, and then we're gonna let this third coat dry for about eight to 12 hours before we move on to the next step. All right, so now I've got three coats of epoxy on my tumbler. And here's a step that you usually don't see in my videos. Usually between like the third, around the third or fourth coat of epoxy, I do a second round of sanding because either I have a wobbly bottom or a little bump came up or something, something I need to smooth out before my actual final coats. It's almost never totally perfect after just the third coat, okay? So on this particular cup, I had a really wobbly bottom. This came from my cup getting uneven on my cup arm. It wasn't totally level. So I've got a 320 grit sanding paper here. You can use almost any grit, but I would recommend doing a finer grit if possible. I'm just gonna hold this flat against the table and I'm gonna run the bottom of my tumbler against this really hard. You wanna get it really flat against that sandpaper and just drag it across the paper as many times as you need to and keep checking it until it sits totally level with your table and it's no longer rocky. I would also recommend buffing out that sanding with a finer grit sanding block. This is a 220 grit here. I think, no, sorry, it's a 120 grit <laughs> that I'm using to buff out 
that sanding that I did with the paper, and then I'll go back in and repeat those steps until my bottom is completely smooth um, and, and really does lay flat. This is really important to me. I never like to send out my tumblers wobbly. Okay, sometimes it does happen. Okay, but we wanna try to avoid this as much as possible. I also double check that bottom rim because sometimes my epoxy will pull from the corner there and so I have to sand again. Um, and sometimes I have to sand that top rim again as well. Um, so I just kind of like to feel things after around the third or fourth coat, see what additional sanding needs to be done before I move into the actual final coats. Um, it's almost impossible for me to get all of the sanding done in that initial sanding session. There's almost always two sanding sessions. It's how I've always done it. And this is really the process that works for me. And like I had said earlier in the video, use whatever process works for you. And you're going to find out what works best for you after time and practice. Okay. So now that I'm gearing up for what I'm hoping will be my actual final coat, I always put a level against the very bottom of my cup and check with my level, double double check to make sure it's nice and level and straight on the cup arm. And then I wipe my cup down with um, some tack cloth. Prior to this, after we were done sanding, I did clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels like we had discussed earlier, okay? So now I'm ready to apply what I'm hoping will be my actual final coat. And this one did turn out really smooth. For my actual final coat, I'm also using a enhanced UV protection epoxy resin from Alumalite. So this is going to protect it from any yellowing over time and keep all those colors nice and bright, okay? When I'm applying my final coat, I really, really take every precaution necessary <laughs> to get this coat as perfect as possible. I make sure all the debris is moved from the surface of the cup. I double ch check to make sure that my tools don't have any debris on them or my gloves. And I also have my cups turning in a cabinet where they're not exposed to any lint or debris in the air. Does this mean it's a foolproof system? No. <laughs> okay, so there's plenty of times where I might have to do a fifth or a sixth coat even to really get the perfect finish, okay? And even then, there's always going to be that one or two little spaces, okay, or something on there, um, but I really just try to do my best, and I think I do a pretty good job. Okay, so don't be too hard on yourself, guys. I know this is pretty tough. I know that there's a big learning curve to epoxy tumblers, but just practice makes perfect and uh, be patient with yourself, okay? <laughs> so once we get this final coat on there, I'm gonna let this coat dry for at least 12, maybe longer. This particular epoxy takes longer to dry for some reason, so I might even let this one sit for a full 24 hours before I start messing with it. All right, so now our cup is done. You can see that everything is nice and smooth. So I'll show you how we're gonna clean up this top room here. So we're gonna remove our inserts. And I've got a nice and sharp craft knife here. And we're just going to use that to trim off any of this excess epoxy up here around the top rim. This is not going to break our seal because remember we established the seal right here, okay? So very carefully, don't cut yourself. <laughs> Also, be careful that your knife doesn't actually skip and cut the epoxy here because when that happens, you do usually do have to put another coat up over that, unfortunately. Okay, so once we've got that, I'm going to remove any excess epoxy that might have gotten on the inside of my cup by just digging in with the corner of my craft knife, being careful 
not to scratch or damage the inside stainless steel, okay? Just kind of want to wedge our knife right in there. And that excess epoxy should just pop right off. Any kind of smaller pieces, you can kind of scratch off with your thumbnail there. All right, I got a little bit. All right, and so once we've got all that excess epoxy cleaned up, I'm going to clean up any excess paint. So I've got just some uh, regular acetone here. This is the acetone from the hardware store, not the beauty section. Okay, and I'm just gonna wipe out any kind of excess stuff that got in there. Okay, and then I will also spray some rubbing alcohol just for an additional zhuzh there. Really get it clean. Sometimes you'll get some really stubborn paint in there. Uh, you can use like lemon oil, I think I've heard people use or something, but really sometimes it takes some elbow grease with some acetone and a paper towel usually comes off pretty easily for me all right and then once we've got all of that cleaned out I'm just going to wash this off at the sink with some dish soap and water try to keep any kind of abrasive soaps or sponges off of the outside of our tumbler still okay um, but we want the inside here to look exactly as the cup did when we took it out of the box so I really like to do a double take to make sure that this is completely clean and it should look totally brand new on the inside. Here is a very, very close up of that top rim. You'll see just how much we took off there. And then here is a very, very close up of my bottom rim. And that's really what we're looking for. Nice and smooth, no bumpies. Totally clean. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. You guys, if you want more fundamental basic type videos, let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see. I'm happy to put these together for you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flint Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.